Hey guys, I finally got around to pulling the controller off the bike. We're going to do some upgrades on it. Uh, it's going to probably gonna take a couple parts to do this uh, controller. It's got a lot of stuff that needs to be addressed. Um, first thing I did was I wanted to find out where the VCC is. That's the yellow wire here. There's two of them. Um, that usually would be the red wire that would go out of the controller that would hook up to the red positive and how they got it set up is it uh, it goes through the uh, display and the full volt pack voltage goes through this uh, purple wire that comes out and that goes to this jumper here and after it passes through the jumper it goes to the display so basically, what you all you really have to do to fool this controller into thinking that um, it's still got the original pack voltage and you're not over volting the display is to pull this jumper and just basically um, run a wire off the red to uh, center whatever you're like. If you have a battery pack that's running on 60 volts, run it to that. And then you can run the full pack voltage through the large, thicker wire, and you won't blow your uh, regulator and your display up. So that's how I figured that out. So basically, full voltage goes through the green purple wire to the display, goes through that jumper, through the display, and then it comes back through the yellow. And that's how the display basically um, can monitor the pack voltage. So that's can easily be changed without any modifications. So that's good. All these caps here, these will never take uh, even 90 volts, so these got to go. I'll have to special order them. I usually get uh, the same value, but there's uh, 100 volts, so they have to go. Um, I find it really interesting here, they have um, jumpers on the board. What's 60, 64, 72, and 80? So. I guess it's a universal board, you can pretty much just put different FETs on it and just jump her differently. Uh, the the FETs itself are going to be a pain in the butt. Because basically there's no spacer between the heatsink and the board. The only thing that's keeping it floating there is the FETs itself. So if you go... This is one, this is one trick that I've learned that I said I was going to share with you. You don't want to just get carried away and pull all the FETs off because if you don't get the gap right um, if you have the you have to resolder the fets a couple times to get the gap right or else it won't uh, it won't reach the um, the heat sink which I don't even think it really does a really good job in there anyway uh, so what you do is I'm going to have to basically take all the center fets out lead to two ends on each side I can use those as um, a guide when I put the new ones in and then I'll replace the end ones. Um, the solder mask on the bottom is another problem that I've noticed. I'm actually glad I'm doing this because there's some um, serious issues with this controller that down the road on a hot day this probably would have failed. Um, I see at least three or four dry solder joints on the pins of the, um, the FETs. Just giving you a close up of the solder. You might be able to see some of the bad solder joints there. Like literally, I've never seen dry sockets as bad as I've seen on this one. Basically the, the pin of the FET is just sitting in a hole without solder. As you can see they're missing a lot of solder on the um, the solder mask and the plating. At least they put the plating in there to carry the load but uh, they didn't put enough solder on it. Pretty, pretty stingy on the solder. So yeah over time this, this would have failed. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll, this is going to be a very long video, so what I'll do is I'll just make this part one of what I'm going to go through to, to do this. Um, so like I said, the, the, the cap's got to go, uh, the FET's got to go, they got to be resoldered better, and we don't have to do anything with the 
voltage going to the the regulator because it's basically it's jumper you use basically remove the jumper I think the other reason they put that there is because if you use an ignition um, if you look on most e-bikes the ignition is just a thin wire like this because it doesn't really carry a uh, heavy amps it just carries the pack voltage that's it so you pull this off and this would be your ignition wire um, because if that that's broken there the display won't turn on when you push the button so well, obviously it won't have any power on standby so that's it I'll uh, do a part two and we'll start pulling this uh, spreader bar off later guys